Welcome to this Eucharist for Pentecost from St. John the Baptist Church in the benefice of the Cookhams. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love. And renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will now hear the Pentecost reading. The reading is taken from Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 21. The coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deed of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and smoky mist. 
the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. We will now hear the gospel followed by a short sermon. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now thinking about the rushing, mighty wind of Pentecost makes me wonder perhaps whether the weather sums up how we humans might feel about God. The varying weather conditions of sun and rain and so on are necessary for our very existence and we can usually live comfortably within our weather conditions just as God is necessary for our existence and we can usually live comfortably with him. But we can never control our weather just as we can never control God. And occasionally we glimpse the weather's terrifying power just as occasionally we're brought face to face with God's overwhelming power. When Jesus emerged as a new religious leader, it became very clear, even during his lifetime, that he was very special indeed. But it was after his death and resurrection that people began to realise quite how special he was. Jesus often identifies himself with God and talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth, says Jesus, and will guide the followers of Jesus into all truth. And that truth is both from Jesus and from God, for Jesus and God are synonymous. All that the Father has is mine, says Jesus. He will take what is mine and declare it to you. Perhaps Jesus' friends didn't expect the arrival of the Holy Spirit to be quite so powerful. Although they'd seen glimpses of Jesus' power, particularly in his healing ability, they hadn't seen power unleashed to quite this degree. The coming of the Holy Spirit on this one special occasion was accompanied by wind and fire to show quite clearly that it was from God and the effect was intoxicating. So much so that the onlookers accused the recipients of the Holy Spirit of being drunk. But God's power, the power of the Holy Spirit, isn't easily quenched. And Peter, the probably uneducated fisherman, stood up and gave the speech of his life. It may have been his very first sermon. At any rate, it's one of the first recorded speeches of Peter that we have. And it's immensely powerful. It's as though he opened his mouth and the words tumbled out. It was just as Jesus had promised. I still have many things to say to you, he told his disciples while he was still with them, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears and he will declare to you the things that are to come. The Holy Spirit is the God within every human being, and it's accessible to every human being. The Holy Spirit 
the God within, is still full of power. There's immense potential within each one of us to move mountains, to achieve the impossible, to rise above ourselves and to become glorious, just as Jesus promised. It's quite possible for any and every human being to tap into that power of the Holy Spirit and to use it both for themselves and for humanity in general. But the difficulty is that tapping into God's power means relinquishing control. Those who wish to avail themselves of God's power can no longer be like the onlookers, jeering at what they don't understand in order to make it more manageable. Those who wish to use God's power must give up that control, must hand it over to God, saying utterly sincerely, I will accept anything that you permit to happen to me. And then they must wait for unexpected and powerful things to happen. Amen. We will now have our prayers. On this day of Pentecost, when we celebrate and thank God for the sending of the Holy Spirit to the disciples, let us pray that our generation may be similarly blessed and inspired. So firstly, we pray and thank God for our Queen, Prince Philip and the Royal Family. We pray for all in authority, that with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, they will govern wisely, fairly and with humility for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Church, for Stephen and Olivia, our bishops, and for all our clergy. Especially we pray for the work of our village ministry team, led by Father Nick in these difficult times. We pray for our congregations worshipping at home and for the time when we can come together again in our churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer, wheresoever they may be in God's world, for the hungry, for victims of war or disaster, for refugees and those persecuted for their faith. We pray for the sick and all those who care for them, at home, in hospital or in hospice. And we remember especially all those in our local nursing homes. We thank God for the spirit of neighbourly love and caring which has been such a feature of these last two months. And we pray for the dying and for those who have died, that they may rest in peace and rise in glory in God's heavenly kingdom. And we pray for the lonely and those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for ourselves, our families and friends, and in a moment of silence, we bring before God our own special concerns. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of power, May the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit be our inspiration, support and strength, now and always. Merciful Father, accept these prayers 
for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given us the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is our great High Priest, who has entered once for all into the sanctuary, evermore to pour upon your church the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit. He is the one who has gone before us, who calls us to be united in prayer, as were his disciples in the upper room while they awaited the promised gift, the life-giving Spirit of Pentecost. Therefore all creation yearns with eager longing, as angels and archangels sing the endless hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips to your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we, we thank you for feeding us, us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May the spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Filled by the Spirit's power, go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Stay safe. God bless.